Hey everyone, it's Dr. Jen and welcome to Minimalism 102. Minimalism 102, Minimalist Living and Your Mental Health. If you didn't catch the first video, Minimalism 101, I encourage you to go back and watch that video first. For today's video, let's dive a little bit deeper and talk about what is minimalist living. Living with minimalism as your core value can look like the following. One, simply getting rid of things you don't need or use. This helps you to have an uncluttered and simple environment, which then leads to having an unstressed and simple life. Two, a minimalist lifestyle could mean living without an obsession with material things. Three, it could mean using simple tools. Some people may choose to engage in a zero waste lifestyle, for example. They may use reusable shopping bags, only own one set of silverware, one mug, or one cup. Or if you're a woman, that can mean you're using a reusable menstrual cup instead of disposable tampons or pads. The list goes on. Four, it could mean having a simple wardrobe. Or five, carrying very little with you, meaning downsizing your purse or bag if you even carry one at all. Six, it could just mean living lightly, as in nothing weighs you down. Have I convinced you about the benefits of minimalism yet? A quick word on frugality. The definition of frugality is the quality of being economical with money or food, also known as thriftiness. It's a simple way of not spending on unnecessary things, sticking to the essentials. It's about going for quality over quantity. For example, one quality piece may spark joy or last longer than buying many cheap things that break or fall apart sooner. Think fast fashion. A prime example of quality over quantity is a minimalist or capsule wardrobe. Do you buy things that you actually don't need just because they're on sale? I know I've been guilty of this in the past. Let me know if you have too in the comments below. Also, what do you think? Is it good to have an attachment to material things? Just some food for thought. Now, I'd like to engage you in a quick exercise. I want you to examine your relationship to physical things and products. Ask yourself if these are all things that you really want. A good indicator is, in the words of Marie Kondo, does it spark joy? Go ahead and grab a blank piece of paper or pull out your notes app in your phone. If you don't have either, you can brainstorm in your mind. Don't worry. Once you have your piece of paper, go ahead and fold it in half, like so. You should have two columns now. In the left side column, right over here, write the word thing on the top. In the right side column, write the words, does it spark joy? Now in the left column, write a number for each line from one to six. So you can go like one, two, three, four, five, six. Then write down the following words on each corresponding line. One, cell phone. Two, car. Three, shoes, the ones you're currently wearing. Four, purses or wallet. Five, what you had for lunch or plan to have for lunch today. And six, credit card. Now go ahead and ask yourself, does each item spark joy or make you happy? Write down yes or no for each item in the right side column. The point of this exercise is not to make you feel crappy about what you have or might not have. I really just want to get you thinking critically about your worldly possessions and whether each item really matters to you. For some, that item may just be a necessity for work. It's not something that actually is important or sparks joy. If this exercise is working for you, try looking around your room and picking other items. Write those items down and try to decide if each of those items spark joy for you or not. As a clinical psychologist, I'd like to discuss two mental health disorders that could be potential barriers to minimalism. The first is hoarding disorder. The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders is my field's handbook for all mental health disorders that my clients or patients may struggle with. Symptoms of hoarding disorder include having persistent difficulty discarding or parting with possessions regardless of their actual value, this difficulty is due to a perceived need to save the items and the distress associated with discarding them. 
The difficulty discarding possessions results in the accumulation of possessions that congest and clutter active living areas and substantially compromises their intended use. If living areas are uncluttered, it is only because of the interventions of third parties, for example, family members, housemates, cleaners, or authorities. The hoarding causes clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning, including maintaining a safe environment for yourself or others. The hoarding is not due to another medical condition, for example, a brain injury, cerebrovascular disease, or prader willi syndrome. If you or a loved one struggles with hoarding, please know that you're not alone and help is available. You can probably do a Google search on the internet to find local therapists and organizers who are proficient at treating hoarding. The second struggle is Obsessive Compulsive Personality Disorder, also known as OCPD for short which is a pervasive pattern of preoccupation or worry with orderliness, perfectionism, and mental and interpersonal control at the expense of flexibility, openness, and efficiency, beginning by early adulthood and present in a variety of contexts, as indicated by four or more of the following. You may be preoccupied with details, rules, lists, order, organization, or schedules to the extent that the major point of the activity is lost. For example, being unable to complete a project because your own overly strict standards are not met. You may be excessively devoted to work and productivity to the exclusion of leisure activities and friendships. You may be over-conscientious, over-scrupulous, and inflexible about matters of morality, ethics, or values not accounted for by cultural or religious identification. You may be unable to discard worn out or worthless objects even when they have no sentimental value. You may be reluctant to delegate tasks or work with others unless they submit to exactly your way of doing things. You may adopt a miserly spending style towards both yourself and others. And lastly, you may show rigidity and stubbornness. If you struggle with OCPD, please know that you're not alone and help is available. Feel free to speak with a therapist or psychologist about your struggles. The takeaway point here is that minimalism is not for everyone, and some people might actually have difficulty discarding things. If you struggle with OCPD, please know that you're not alone and help is available. Feel free to speak with a therapist or a psychologist about your struggles. I hope this gave you a good overview of minimalist living and the potential mental health barriers to minimalism. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell as well. Minimalism 103 is coming up soon, so stay tuned. I'll be talking about the top 25 benefits of a minimalist lifestyle. Thanks for tuning in today as always. I hope you're healthy and well, and I hope to see you budding minimalists in the next one. Bye. For today's video, let's dig a little bit deeper. Oop, dive a little bit. Okay. For today's video, let's dig a little bit deeper and what? For today's video, let's dive a little bit deeper and talk about what is minimalist living.